Hey guys, this is Josh Peak. I'm the host of The Josh Peak Show, uh, where we interview politicians, podcasters, other entrepreneurs, and people that I think can really add value into your life. Um, so um, you're really going to enjoy today's show. Today's show is very, it's interesting because uh, we're going through a time right now economically um, and uh, as, you know, as a country, some things we've never experienced. And I interview Tim Darnell on this show uh, today, and we talk about, you know, him and I were working together in the early 2000s, just trucking along, doing really, really good. The Google Google AdWords was a wild west. Uh, leads was no problem. Business was great. And then we had an economic downturn. Google changed uh, some things about the way that they did business. And then um, as far as algorithms and and how AdWords should be relevant. Um, and there's just a lot of things that changed. It was almost a perfect storm. And then some outside factors. And so Tim is, is, is brilliant when it comes to the highs and lows of business, which I, most entrepreneurs I've ever been mentored by have had extreme highs, extreme lows. And everybody just seems to see the, the, the positives, the highs. They don't really understand the lows that goes into uh, being an entrepreneur, which – a lot of businesses, a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs are going through right now. And so I think it's fitting uh, that we release this podcast today. Um, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, so uh, with that being said, you can find more of my content at joshpeak.com, Twitter at Josh Peak, Facebook, official Josh Peak is my page. Um, I'm on Pinterest. Um, YouTube is Ask Josh Peak. And so, and you can find me on iTunes as well. On this show, please, I'd appreciate if you'd leave me a review and also uh, subscribe and then as well as leave me a, um, you know, a recommendation. I'd love, I'd love that if you would do that. That'd really help me out. So uh, with that being said, enjoy this show with Tim Darnell. And again, I'm your host, Josh Peak. Thank you. Hey everyone, this is Josh Peak. I'm the host of the Josh Peak Show, where we interview entrepreneurs, uh, business people, po uh, podcasters. We even have um, politicians on from time to time. Um, but today's very special for me because I got a I got a guest that uh, I've known for a long time, and we did some business together. I learned a whole lot with him. I was very young whenever I got started, and we learned a lot of things together. Uh, not just about entrepreneurship, but we learn more, uh, you know, on the legal side of business, we learn about the internet. And, but it was one of the most interesting uh, models that I've ever seen. And I thought it was brilliant at the, at the time. It was, it was ahead of its time. And um, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a fun time. But anyways, with that being said, uh, Tim Darnell is my guest. Hey, Tim, how are you doing? I'm super, Josh. I appreciate you having me on here. Well, I heard your podcast the other day, and I thought it was great. I figured, I always thought that you'd be, a podcast would be right up your alley. I thought you'd be really good at it. Well, you've been very encouraging about that, and you're one of the reasons I did that. So I appreciate you listening to that. Well, yeah, you got a lot of wisdom. Uh, you've been through um, the business world, many, many, many models, many facets of it. And so the best place to start probably would be just when it all did start. Where were you born and raised? Like, where, I mean, I know you're from Texas. Yeah, I was born in Cisco, Texas, and it's a teeny little town out in uh, West Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably heard of the Cisco Kid. That's me. So oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my standard joke. There, really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my dad is a minister. He's been a minister all his life, a pastor, and his uh, little niche in the world is he really knows Greek and Hebrew. And mm. so he goes back to the original texts. And then uh, later on, he went to get his uh, PhD at Duke University. And there he had to learn German because a lot of the commentaries were in German. And he also learned Aramaic and Syriac, which are old, outdated languages. But to get to the bottom of all his study, he had to know those languages. So pretty unique and growing up in that atmosphere. But I really, I never thought I would follow in his footsteps and not, not because I don't love Jesus because I do, but because I'm just d built differently. I've, I'm a, I'm a, 
entrepreneurial type personality and there's some things you can't take away. I mean, you, you are what you are, you know? Right. And so, I mean, even at a young age, I, I remember going out door to door and selling uh, flower seeds and then uh, Christmas cards. And I just ate it up. I loved it. I mean, I enjoyed doing that. And uh, I was the cute little kid that came around and nobody could say no to, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So you had a little bit of an had a little bit of an edge there on everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So, I, but my dad, you know, my dad's no nothing business. I mean, no, there's no mm -hmm. business about him whatsoever. No sales, no marketing, no entrepreneurial spirit. So we're just we we're real different. I I really appreciate what he gave me as far as love for the Bible, love for study, and uh, all those. Growing up in the church was certainly good for me, uh, but uh, as far as career choices, man, we were night and day. And uh, yeah, <laughs> now the other influence that I had, Josh, that I don't, I don't know, you, you and I have even talked about this much in the past, but uh, my mother is a very, very accomplished pianist and organist and mm -hmm. uh, just really good musician. And she taught me all that growing up. So I had a band starting from about 13 years old and that turned into professional and uh, several bands. And we, I traveled most of my adult life. Uh, especially on weekends for big uh, conferences and conventions and uh, all, arenas all over the world, literally. And so it's been a real good career there. But the interesting thing about music is it's a part, it's even at best, it's a part-time situation. And so that opened me up to looking at other business when I wasn't doing music. And that's where the, uh, the network marketing came in and the different other business uh, models that I've, I've done throughout the ages here. So there's, and some of those, for instance, network marketing, that's a part-time deal too. You, you really can't do uh, MLM full-time. It's, it's, it's just not constructed that way. So mm -hmm. those, those two careers have really, I've done them all my life and I've been uh, really, uh, what's the word here? Uh, just, I've been successful, just to be honest, at both of them yeah. very, very well. And, and uh, I sold over a million albums, uh, musical albums with no record company. And so what that means is when somebody pays $15 for a record, we keep the $15. Right. Right. <laughs> you don't pay, you don't pay the record company 12 and you keep two and a half or three. So, yeah. You don't, you don't pay Apple 30%, right? Right off that's the top. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what Garth Brooks did. That was so genius. You know, he, well, of course he had, you know, he's Garth Brooks, but I mean, uh, he didn't even go through iTunes. He went straight to, um, straight through Walmart distribution yeah. and said, I'm not paying 30%, you know? I was here before you guys. I'm not going to do it. So I knew you were a, uh, well, you are still, you still, you're still in the music world, right? I mean, you still, you still uh, are involved, right? Yeah. I don't know if you see this hat right here, but that's the name yeah. of my group I've got right now called Hats, H-A-T-Z. Mm -hmm. And we released at Christmas about three weeks ago, we released uh, our version of Oh Holy Night. And mm -hmm. we've had a ton of downloads on that. And, and so it's just fun. I mean, it's just who I am and, and uh, part of my, you know, just my makeup is, is the music thing, but uh, the business thing has really been just so creative as well. It, they're, they're both real creative. As an entrepreneur, what you're doing, you're creating business, you're creating products, you're creating markets, you're, you're uh, getting into markets in creative ways. And music's the same thing. You're creating songs, you're going into the studio and recording. And so I'm always recording either a musical piece or a business piece. And uh, I think I told you right before we got on here, but I've written three books over the last two and a half weeks. And so now we're putting together the software to, to make those uh, sellable online. Uh, but uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's just, I get up early in the morning, I start writing and bam, before you know it, we got a product. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I know that you've, I mean, we've been talking lately and, and, uh, and we'll talk about it here in a minute kind of what you're doing these days, but you've got involved with, with click funnels and uh, which is a brilliant product um, and a service and you're creating some, your own funnels, obviously. And, and I think it's just perfect what you're doing. Well, there it Frank, is. I, I know you and I have a lot of common interests here. I just got this book right here by uh, one of the top guys in that field, but he's, it's, if you've lost everything today, mm -hmm. of course, my story is, it, as you well know, is losing a monster business uh, due to an uh, internet stalker, internet troll, and we had no answer to it whatsoever. So uh, this book right here is him talking about if you lost everything, what would you do over the next 30 days? What so you know what's crazy? 
You know what's, what's crazy? I, I recorded this morning. I recorded a podcast by myself. Usually it's with people like you. I, I've done some with my wife. I've done it with other entrepreneurs. And, but this morning I woke up. I'm like, I'm going to do a podcast myself. Ah. And, um, and so, and it was from an internet. It was from a subscriber from a couple, a couple years ago that sent it to me. And it said, if, if you were to start all over again today, what would you do? And I talked about that this morning. And I think, I think with, and that's hard to say, obviously, because you and I have, have some skill sets going into this. It's not like we're, we are starting over, but we're, but, but we have a little bit of know-how. And, right. and so, but if I was to start all over personally, I would do it the way we're, what we're doing right now. I would get a microphone, I'd get a computer, I would get Libsyn and I'd start recording on all the content that I have. And I'd, and I'd become an affiliate marketer probably, and then uh, generate leads. And then, I think if you're an affiliate marketer, you've got an audience and you're generating leads. It's not really reoccurring a lot of it. So then I think the next step would be then the most logical step would be like, Hey, if you want some real residual income, it'd be network marketing. So, uh, but then that got into, I even talked about, this is crazy. We're talking right now about this. Then we talked what I learned from you. Well, I learned a lot of things from you, but one of the things I learned from you was uh, infinite banking. I think it's crazy not to be a part of infinite banking now that I know what I know. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about the 401ks and you're going to, you're going to take some money out for your kids college and then the tax bill on that and everything. I mean, we could go on for years about what, what, I've, what you and I have talked about, but that's, you know, getting into real estate, getting into e-commerce, but then taking the money you make, put it into, to the infinite banking model and then financing it through that. If you've got some, now a lot of people like what you're saying is you start from zero. You don't have that. Um, so if you were to start from zero, how would you do it? Like, what would you do? Oh boy. I, I would uh, pray first of all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause I, you know, it, it's, it's easy for us to talk about it right now. When, when I lost that business plus my income and then being $350,000 in, in business debt, along with two gals going into college, two, two mm. daughters, uh, your car, your automobile expenses, you know, about a thousand a month Then your uh, mortgage, which I think at the time was 2,200, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a, it's a mind trick on you when that happens. And there's some, there is some panic that goes along with it, you know? And, and so, so you really have to really, you have to buckle down, you have to meditate, you have to think about now exactly what am I going to do here? Cause we're going to, these bills are going to be due, due soon. You know I mean? They're not, <laughs> this is an imminent uh, disaster waiting to happen right now. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do, I would, I would probably, first of all, I would pick up the, the most popular, most exciting, most timely network marketing company that I could uh, if I wasn't already in one. And I would go into that and I would develop a funnel for that where I could uh, market on Facebook and Google ads I would get the, I'd build that funnel as quickly as I possibly can. And when you're building a funnel, a marketing funnel, the first one's the hardest. Once you've done that, you've got a skill now that is a powerful skill because with a funnel, you can sell anything. You can go with what you're talking about. Affiliate marketing. Great. Do that. That's probably your best uh, defense against impending bills is find a great popular uh, affiliate marketing uh, product that's out there and then uh, combine that with your network marketing. And so you fuse those three together, you can get income from uh, two or three different sources right there really quickly if you can get that funnel up quick. And uh, like I say, once you've done your first one, the second one's a breeze. I mean, boom, you're just, you're just knocking this stuff out. You know how to do it. Like when I was uh, just started with funnels, I didn't realize how important Wi-Fi was <laughs> in mm -hmm. that process and having good Wi-Fi. Well, I was on AT&T, so I thought, well, they've got to be the leader. I, surely it's not a Wi-Fi problem. It's having a lot of stuttering in my videos and, uh, you know, problems with the mouth not matching up with me talking and that kind of thing. Real, very unprofessional. Well, when you figure that out and you get into a, a Wi-Fi situation that's strong enough, bam, you've knocked out a big deal right there. So some of the technical aspects of it, if you know those and those are, you don't have to go through that process of changing services and all that kind of stuff, man, you can be up and running real quick. And uh, as far as the network marketing company is concerned, I'd find one that has a lot of money up front and some of them are geared that way. Some are not. 
some it'll take you six months before you make any money. And that's, that's in this scenario you and I are talking about right now, uh, we need one that has some upfront bonuses so that we can, you know, really uh, meet our overhead real quickly. Right. Anyway, that is sort of fun to talk about. It's less fun to do. <laughs> it's oh yeah. Yeah. Less fun to be in that situation. <laughs> yeah. But the fact is once you've done it, once you've been able to do it, um, then like you said, you have a blueprint kind of to go off of. It's almost, yep. it takes the fear away once you can do it and you have done it like what you're doing now. Well, it's almost like you, you don't want to ever have to go back to zero, but if it ever did happen, you're like, I'm pretty confident now that I've yep. got a skill set that I could, uh, I could create some things pretty quick. And I see it. What's funny is I found out about funnels before, like Russell Brunson was talking about click funnels. I mean, he didn't even have it at the time. Right. But Joe, Sh I was working with a guy uh, out of Jersey that was doing it. And then there was Mike Dillard in your area in Austin, Texas, that was doing it. And so we were doing funded proposals before because Joe, even the guy that was being mentored by, he's like, you have to be able to make cash flow up front. You have to be able to, he said, there's two things that will kill being an entrepreneur. And that is lack of cash flow and broken focus. Yeah. He said, if you don't have cash flow coming in, which means if you're selling a $14 course, Maybe you're giving something away for free. Then you get a $14 course. Then it's $97. Then you have something that's $297 and then goes up to, say, 1000 or more. So all that cash coming in is cash. But obviously, then you have leads to back into your network marketing business or whatever. But it's called a funded proposal. It's funding. It's making upfront money while you're waiting on that residual to start kind of coming up from your network marketing. But it's, it's a powerful play. And you're seeing people do it. And you're seeing people now today you know, they have places where like, you know, I used to do in homes and this, that, and the other, which I think is still viable. I still think you got to get in front of people, <clears throat> but I think these uh, Facebook groups where you can do a zoom presentation like this and capture your audience and, and you can touch them at any time of the day um, is a powerful, I mean, technology is powerful right now. There's things that when you and I are working together, there's things if we would have had well, what is today, then it'd have been even much bigger. Yeah. Well, I, I think about some of my former bands that I had. You, we had no internet back then. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking now today, if we had that and integrated that into that whole uh, scheme of things, then boy, we could have had a much bigger reach. Uh, but I'm like you, you know, there's the old school, going back to network marketing, talking about that. There's old school network marketing, which 99.9% .9 of all network marketers do. And one of my books is the 10 secrets to network marketing success. Mm -hmm. It talks about 10 things that absolutely you want to do in network marketing. Uh, if you're not advertising on Facebook ads or Google ads or things like that, but then you put those together with this funnel concept with Facebook ads and you're really targeting the right people uh, that would be appreciative and capable to work a network marketing program and maybe even having a group that they want to bring over because they like what you're doing on the internet that they're not doing. Now you got something that can really pop quick. And uh, so, you know, it, it's all who you know. And uh, Russell talks about his top 100. And man, I think that's a real key thing right there. Uh, if you're working a, a network marketing program and it's a binary, you basically, theoretically, all you need is two people, one on the left and one on the right that know how to build a business. If you can help them become successful, then bam, you can, you know, you can put line your pockets as much as you want. So all of that's theory. There's a lot of luck involved, I think, Josh, still. I mean, it, it's, you know, you do everything you can and sometimes things pop and you don't even know how it popped. And then you got times when, man, nothing seems to work and you're doing the exact same thing. So there's an element of faith that has to go along in this. And when I say faith, that faith is not a, an emotion. It's not a mood. It's a decision that you're mm -hmm. trusting that you're going to be taken care of, that God is with you and that he's got a plan and, and it's going to happen. And so I choose to have faith in, in all of my business dealings. Everything I do is a very calming effect uh, when you can do that. And it's just a decision that we make on our own. You, you can do it or not do it. If you don't do it, I'd be freaked out all the time. So. Yeah. I mean, and it is a decision. It is. I think as you get older or as I've gotten older, it's my faith is getting stronger but that's probably become from wisdom and just being through it a couple. I mean, I, everything you just talked about, I've been through it. Like, well, you know, there's a business right after the business you and I were working and it happened for me. It was just like, it just popped where right place, right time, Dallas, Texas launched it. And it was just massive. And I'm going, 
and I'm saying as we're going through them, like, I don't know. I told Jesse this. I said, if I was, if someone is to ask me how I did this, there is no way that I could say it would, it may ever happen again. I mean, yeah. I, there's not, it's not like I diagrammed it out and had a blueprint on what it just happened. Yeah. And then there's other companies that you're like, it was a really legitimate, good model and didn't make it. And you're going, that one was better than this one. Yet this one made it. Yeah. And, and it shouldn't have, you know, <laughs> should have made it. And the other one should have made it. So man, faith is like everything. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, I mean, there's just, but even in sports too, I mean, um, especially individual sports, I mean, you have to have that faith. It's just you and that, I mean, if you're a wrestler, it's just you and a person and a ref. If you're a gymnast or you're a, it, it may just be you and, um, uh, and entrepreneurship. Yeah. You're building a team, but ultimately it's you. I mean, it, it's a, it's an individual sport in some ways, you know? Well, I, I think wrestling has helped us both to understand that. I mean, when you're on the mat, it is you period and the other guy. Yeah. And you're going to either win and you're not, and you got to make a decision. I'm, I'm going to win this thing, man. I don't care. I'm winning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, doesn't mean you're going to win every time, but boy, that attitude is so important. Business is the same thing. You, you'd you say, well, I, I don't know what the odds are, what I'm facing. I'm not even sure who my opponent is here. Uh, but it, it can't be my insecurity. My opponent cannot be my insecurity. It needs to be my security and faith and, and hope and all those intangibles that a lot of people don't talk about in business. I think that's, that's a, a foundational thing that helps people become successful is saying, look, it's like, a, it's like when you throw a pebble in the water, there's going to be ripples that come out of that pebble coming out of the water. You're going to see those ripples. And that, that water doesn't matter. It doesn't care whether it's Josh throwing it in there or it's Tim throwing it in there. There's going to be ripples like that. And so I think in business, it's the exact same things. If you know what to do and you know what income producing activities are and you implement those, then you are going to be successful. The ripples will happen. And so a lot of people go around like a chicken with their head cut off going, oh, my God, I threw that rock in. I don't think there's going to be a ripple. Yes, there is. Yeah. It is. It's a law of physics. It's going to happen. And we're the same way as business people. Look, it, you know, there's a lot of unknown out there. There's no question about it. But I know one thing. I know what I'm going to do. I know how to do it. And I'm going to do it to the fullest of my extent uh, that I can possibly uh, muster uh, during these times. And good stuff's going to happen. Man, you know, in the business world, you know as well as I do, you can make a lot of money if, if you'll just be that leader that has those intangibles. Yeah. Well, so I guess that's the next question is, do you think right now out of all time, I mean, here we are, Donald Trump's president. Uh, the economy is phenomenal. Nobody can deny that. Um, right now, out of all the years, I mean, you've been on this planet. Where are we set right now? Is, do you think it's, a, it's one of the best times ever, the best time, or to ever be, to be an entrepreneur? You know, I really do. I, uh, I think there's smart things that you can do financially. Uh, one reason I'm such a big proponent of network marketing is, is because it's, it's not just income, it's residual income. And so I want people to, what I try to do in my uh, coaching and training and that kind of thing is I say, man, when you set up an asset like that with network marketing, I don't care how much it is, maybe a thousand dollars a month, but that's residual. That's coming in every month, every month, mm -hmm. every month. So that's an important thing to do regarding finances. Forget if, if you've got a bias for network marketing like me or against it, like some people, it doesn't matter. It's a smart financial thing to do. And man, uh, with this economy right now, money is flowing. Money is available. Industries are thriving. People are employed. And uh, it's just a, a, the hope factor is huge. The positive expectancy is, is so much better than when it's a doom and gloom economy. And so, yeah, I'm with you, man. I, I think, I think now's the time to explore that in, infinite banking concept. I think it's time you, you should have a network marketing company that you're building. I absolutely uh, believe in that. I believe you should invest in the stock market. I think right now is a phenomenal time for stocks and look at some of the 5G stocks that are out there. Uh, some of the biomedical stocks that are out there, uh, they're going to get nothing but bigger, almost all of them. Yeah, you'll have mm -hmm. a few losses here and there, but, but learn how to get with companies that you know are going up and up and up. I'm looking at my portfolio this morning. I'm seeing 
several stocks I've been in not long at all, four, five, six months, I've already doubled my money with those. And so a time like this, man, it's time to, to bear down on your financial situation, do everything you possibly can, because when that turns around, if it, if it dips, then you've got that network marketing residual income coming in. You've got the stock, stocks have gone up and you've got value in that. You've got the infinite banking situation, which is by far the smartest thing you can do, saving money versus a 401k. All you gotta do is just do the models, put them side by side and figure it out. And uh, one thing we don't know in this economy is you get another regime in here uh, that changes the tax structure. Then if you got a 401k, you are, <laughs> you got problems. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, no, you, no, you do. I mean, that's when I read that there, I think it was a book you gave me. Um, I had the infinite banking book, but there was another book you sent me. I can't think of the name of it is, but it was model off infinite banking. Yeah. It's it called, uh, uh, da, 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 da. it's called the uh, tax free retirement by yes. Kelly, Patrick Kelly. Yes. That was brilliant. I was over at my dad's house. It's funny because I just, I was over at my parents' house. He was talking about his 401k, this, that, and the other. And I just kept my mouth shut. You know, I'm sitting there going, okay, whatever. Cause that's all they've been taught. Right. They don't, right. they don't know any different. And I said, I said, <laughs> I said, do you realize you're getting, when you take that 401k out, if, if you were going to send one of my brothers to college, I mean, you're probably at close to your peak as far as making money when you're fifties, sixties, right? I mean, you're taxed on that. You're taxed on your highest, what you're making at your highest peak. You're not taxed right. when, like how you put, when you put it in, you're making 20,000 a year. You're being taxed when you're making 120, 130, 50,000 a year. Um, the infinite banking model is just, it's brilliant. And uh, I think like you, say you own a business and you have a network marketing business that's on the side that you should never even touch the network marketing. In, in, um, are you still there? Sorry yeah, you cut that. out just a little bit. Yeah, so, sorry about that. Uh, but the um, the infinite the, the money you're making from network marketing should go. I, I if you if you have another business and you're doing good, uh, that if you could put all of that into infinite banking, and then obviously you can use that to buy stocks. You can use it to buy real estate or whatever. Um, I mean, man, tax what free. A, tax free? What, oh, tax free! Like what a place you'd be in. I mean, you can turn, I, here's what I heard one time. It was a good, it was kind of reminds me of what you and I are talking about. Um, one year of consistent hard work, focus and just drive and, and really putting your mind to business can change your whole entire life and five, 10 years of bad business down the journey. I mean, it can change, it can turn it around completely, turn it around. Yeah. I think you've, you've seen that where one year can change everything. Well, you know, I, that it absolutely can. I'm, I'm living proof of that. My story is, and uh, so I went for about four and a half years with no income after this uh, debacle with this internet troll, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, just couldn't find anything. I, every everything I tried didn't work miraculously. It miraculously did not work. <laughs> and yeah. later on, I said that to several people, and I didn't even know what I was saying. Later on, I, I realized, man, it didn't work for a reason because you were the right thing was on the horizon and it was coming to you, but the timing had to be right. And so that timing, I finally got it, finally found the thing that I could jump on. And within four years, we'd created over seven digits in income. And uh, it was like, man, how, how is it that four and a half years, nothing works. <laughs> yeah. And then, then you find one thing and you go to work on it. And like you said, it was like the first year was just pound, 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 pound. And I wasn't killing myself. I mean, I was just, but I was focused and, and just doing it consistently. I think in, in business, if you'll be consistent, man, that that's one of the key things that'll help you become successful down the road. Yeah. We have so many distractions in this world. I mean, you have social media and you have, you really have to be focused. See, that's a hard, like I own a digital agency working with a U.S. congressman and have a portfolio of companies we're working with. And I, and there's times I'm like, you know what? I am staying completely off the internet. I'm not, I'm not going to get to social media. I'm like, I can't, that's what I do for a living. I can't not be on social media. That's what I do for a living. I've got yeah. to, I have to post, I have to, you know, I have to run the businesses on social media. That's, that's, that's what I do, you know? So it's like, it's not like I can't do it, but I think with social media, there are so many distractions, but I like what you're doing right now, which is, you know, you're using, um, you're using a funnel. Um, you know, you're driving into a network marketing and just by listening to what you're talking right now, it's, it's awesome. 
I mean, it's just totally awesome what you're, you know, the, I've watched you, I've watched you develop because as an owner of that company, you couldn't really focus on internet marketing. You're running a company at the time. You yeah. couldn't focus on, you couldn't focus on funnels. You couldn't focus on any of it. Right? You had to focus on your management mode at that point. You're running a major company and that had to be your focus. So when I'm over here talking about internet marketing and funnels, you're like, great, just go build it. But I can't focus there. And, <laughs> and now where you're at, it's a, it, it, you, you're there, but, I think like, like you said, once you have that know-how and you've been down that road, man, and you've tasted victory and defeat, um, I don't know. I just feel like I think we can do things. I think we can do things so much faster today than what, than what we were able to say 20 years ago. I, there's a guy that told me, he goes, you can make more money today compounding so fast, but you can also lose and spend more money today faster. We have Amazon. We have e-commerce. We can blow money quick because of that, because of internet. I mean, we can make a lot of money, but we can, it's easy to spend a lot of money. I think discipline is the, is a big key. Talk about that a little bit. Cause I remember when we were working together, you'd always talk about discipline. I mean, how it was important. Well, yeah, it, it is. And, and uh, you know, you can make a lot of money and you, you can get giddy and you can feel invincible and you can feel like, Oh, it's never going to end. And boy, that's just not the case. It, it's uh, temporal meaning that, yeah, right now is good but you better put money back and you better be saving all the time and not spending, especially on frivolous items. I mean, you know, as a younger man, I was a car guy. I love cars, but now today I'm like, man, give me something that will get me from here to the place I need to go. Right. And I don't need to spend a fortune on a vehicle for whatever reason. I mean, I, there's, there's really no reason uh, to do that. Just get a reliable vehicle to do that. But uh, the discipline in everything, is one of those intangibles that is is so powerful. A lot of people think of work as a four letter word. I think of it as a joy. I think of it as a privilege to be able to do that. And that's why I get up early in the morning and get stuff done. And uh, again, I'm not killing myself, but I am consistent. I'm disciplined and I have a focused goal in mind of what we want to accomplish right here. And I want to learn how to do it quicker and better all the time. And that's why the, the funnel thing is really appealing to me. Uh, we have a, over 26,000 people on our team right now in the network marketing world. And a lot of that due to some of the luck that I had with bringing people in who brought good teams on board and that kind of thing, whatever. But uh, I think that we can double that number in the next three years. That took seven and a half years to do that old school way. And I think we can uh, 50% of that uh, time, uh, we can, we can double that same number. And so uh the funnel enables you to do that. And that the, the one thing in network marketing that really is a problem for every single person, that is you eventually run out of people. You, yeah. you talk to your friends and your family. And so if you didn't have to talk to friends and family, number one, you didn't have to bug them. They would be appreciative of that problem. <laughs> and, uh, and then you had an infinite number of people that you're reaching out to that you've targeted as specifically as you possibly can to get to the right people, you bring on a, a solid person with network marketing experience. Well, they're going to hit the ground uh, ground running versus a newbie inexperienced person who's going, what is this? What's that? What do we do next? How do you say that? You know, all this kind of stuff like that. And you're going, Oh my God, I'm going to have to, you know, babysit this person to get them mm -hmm. up and running. You don't do that anymore. And so that cuts your time involvement, time commitment of building a team uh, way down. And you can literally onboard people without talking to them. You don't even have to talk to them and boom, they're coming into your organization. So it, it's an exciting time. It's, a, it's as big a bombshell uh, in our industry as uh, almost any announcement you can make. I remember way back in the nineties, uh, I wonder what year that was, maybe 90, 91, something like that. We had a company came out with a video and we didn't have many, uh, tools. We had cassette tapes back then. It was about all we had. But one company came out with this really high produced video and it had a bunch of athletic stars on it and medical phenoms. Uh, Dr. Christian Barnard was one of them, first heart transplant, that kind of thing. And there was like 15 of these people just boom, everyone I'm testimonial for this product. We got that video and it was, talk about a bombshell. I mean, it was like, bam, man, the whole world. Viral. <laughs> but yeah. yeah new technology and uh and it empowered us to think man all i gotta do is show this show this video and the video does the talking for you well 
what if you do that whole process now with virtually any company that you really like, you like the products, you like the comp plan, you like the management, you like their track record, whatever about it you like about them, but you can come in and start sharing value with people. And if they step up and raise their hand and say, I want on board, then they can go through that entire informational process and the enrollment process without you even talking to them. And I'm going, man, after the years I've spent living on the phone, I'm, I'm, that's a good proposition for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that it was a bad, it was almost like a, it was a weird, when I got in, uh, it was really working both sides of it. A lot of my friends were major internet marketers that are good friends with like Russell and these guys. And they hated, like, I think deep down inside of them, they liked network marketing. They just didn't want to admit it. Uh, <laughs> but, but they didn't, but, but they didn't, but they'd never been successful at them, you know? So they're like, well, we're, we're not doing network marketing. We don't like that, you know, that space. And the network marketing owners did not like that. It's not that they didn't like it. They were scared and was uneducated of the internet marketing space. Right. And I remember one owner, I won't mention his name. He's obviously in Utah. Uh, but anyways, he, they he, all? yeah, he, he, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, I don't like the internet. It'll, we're going to burn the fields up with it. We're going to go there and we're going to basically, he thought they were going to saturate super fast. He, he saw the power of the internet. He saw it, but he thought we would saturate the name super fast. And, and for 20, 30 years, how long he had built, you know, built that company. He thought this thing could go down in a matter of, and, and, and I see, I, look, you got to protect your brand as a company. I yeah. get what he's saying. I yeah. totally understand that. But he didn't see the big picture. And today, he's got people, again, I'm not going to mention the company or the name. They're still very strict, uh, litigious, I would say. So that I give kind of a, a way who it is. But, um, but these, I know people in, his com in this company that have Facebook groups. They're doing exactly what other people I know that are great internet marketers are doing. They have like a Facebook group. They'll go and do, uh, they go on Facebook and message all their friends like five o'clock in the morning. They'll do these like, you know, uh, voice, um, uh, voice memos on Facebook, private message, get them into a Facebook group. And then that Facebook group takes them into another Facebook group, which is customer base. And then if they want to be a, a builder, they go through a builder. And I'm like, well, that's a great idea. They've been, I, I know people have been doing that for the last four or five years and then are making seven figures. And they're like, yeah, but we can't tell, we can't tell the owner we're doing it. I'm like, we're in 2019. You're telling me you cannot. <laughs> I mean, why would he not like, why would they not like this? This is insanity. Yeah. Uh, I mean now 2020, right. But to me, it's like, if I'm a company owner, yeah, I want to protect my brand, but I also want to give my people the latitude to be able to be entrepreneurs and free thinkers and say, look, I don't care how you do it. Just make sure you have integrity. Make sure you're not lying and inflating the product claims and this, that, and the other, just do the things <laughs> right. Yep. Uh, and become an, an internet entrepreneur. And if you want to drive Uber on the side and you want to have, I don't care what you do. I'm not your, I mean, I'm not your boss. So you're a 1099 man. Yeah. Uh, go do it, you know? And so anyways, I just, I, I don't know. I, I kind of went off on that, but because of this, the, the funnels that you're doing and um, you know, and, and I know what kind of you're, you're, you're crushing of what you're doing in this company. And it's not surprising to me. I mean, you, you were good at what, when we, when we were working together in the conference business, uh, it was the most unique model at the time that I had ever seen. Obviously the compensation plan was great. Google AdWords, we were in a, we were just at the perfect place, perfect time. Google was, you know, it made sense to go spend 500 to a thousand dollars and generate a $7,000 sell and that kind of thing. Well then Google changed, the economy changed. And then obviously you're talking about, uh, I mean, I guess we went, we didn't go through what Donald Trump went through as far as being, you know, <laughs> I yeah. mean, he gets tore down pretty good. I don't, oh my I don't God. know how the guy does it. I have no idea how the guy strong, can that. he's strong, he, man. <laughs> if, if I could enroll someone like him in network marketing, <laughs> I would just move right out of the way. <laughs> you know, say, 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 can we find another one that's half as good as you? And then I'm, you know, that, that's seven figures all day long. Yeah. But I mean, it makes you wonder really what has made him. He's just bulletproof, man. I mean, you talk about faith. Like mm -hmm. the guy has, he is absolutely bulletproof. And I think you, I think he's like, I work with a U.S. congressman. I think he is not only overworked the Democrats. I think he's, he's worked the Republican. I think he literally, when he says drain the swamp, I think the way he's done it in a sense, or he's doing it, I think he's just, I think nobody can keep up with his pace. I think yep. that's one way he does it. I mean, I think he overworks people. 
Well, he does that. He, he doesn't sleep very much. He overworks people, but he's also, he's a thinker, man. He's the guy that wrote the art of the deal. Mm -hmm. And so he is constantly thinking of chess moves. And uh, the, the great example is it's a little bit overdone now, but he's playing three dimensional chess while everybody else is playing checkers on a broken yeah. checkerboard, you know, <laughs> and uh, he's just got it figured out. But uh, anyway, I'm glad to, you know, as a business person, that is exactly who we need running this country. We need somebody who's entrepreneurial. They understand their CEO esque, uh, their owner esque. They understand uh, how to run a business and how to not make mistakes, and uh, and also show strength in that process. A lot of a lot of our past presidents have been so wussy that mm -hmm. countries just run over us like crazy, and it hurts business. It hurts yeah. us little guys out here. Oh, it does. I mean, man, our economy is, I mean, America is just booming right now. We are, we're winning. And, uh, I just think people were, I just don't think we ever had a leader or a president that knew how to negotiate. And, and when you say negotiate, I mean like literally be willing to walk away from the deal. Yeah. I just don't think we had anybody who's willing to do that. And what's crazy is, uh, you and I, it was funny. You and I went to New York once <laughs> and, uh, we were looking at this network marketing company. We knew it wasn't going to make it. I mean, but, uh, guy was, a, I mean, guy was very wealthy pretty pretty intelligent guy i would say but i mean we're, i was riding these car i don't know if you guys were with us yet but we're going up through upstate new york we're going to his dillon it was up north of new york and we went around a curve and there's trump towers like there's a bunch of trump towers and i was like you know that's crazy i said he, he just leases his name and he's like yeah that's all he does he just leases his name and we're driving around there and i and it, i I had my iPhone, brand new iPhone. I was on Facebook and I'm seeing this Trump and it just came across my mind. And I was talking to him. It was like 2013. I said, and I asked him, I said, do you think, and he's a liberal by the way. Yeah. I said, I said, do you think that Trump would ever run for president? He goes, well, first of all, no. And second of all, if he did, he would have, he'd have two chances of winning slim and none. No one would vote. <laughs> and I said, really, you don't think he may vote him? I said, we need a, pre like we need a businessman running this country. He goes, his exact words, well, you can't run a government like a business. You just can't do that. Uh, and I said, okay. I said, yeah. And so I posted on Facebook, if Donald Trump ever ran for president, would you vote for him? And a lot of people were like, oh, I mean, this he would never run. And if he did, he wouldn't win. And there's your business people going, oh, yeah, I'd vote for him. Right. And the guy, the guy I think he's going to win overwhelmingly in 2020. Well, I just don't think. I mean, it's his to lose. Yeah, I got a chance to go to his rally down here in Dallas, and, and uh, it was – it was one of the biggest life events I've ever been involved with. I mean, it was so cool. And of course you see it on TV all the time. These places are packed, man. There's, there's as many people outside as there are inside these arenas. And, uh, he, he struck a nerve in a, in a very positive way. So yeah, exciting, exciting times to be alive. My, my friend. It is, man. It really is. He's got it. And by the way, he's got a podcast, man, on, um, if you go to iTunes, I mean, the guy, I'll say this. He's the most, not only is he the hardest working person I've ever, he's the most brilliant marketer that I've ever seen. And we've seen them all. Like we, like Russell Brunson, click funnels, Frank Kern, you know, mass control. And Donald Trump is the best marketer that, and he's got the best team that I've ever seen. I mean, he built his own data platform. He didn't go off and like, you could buy a list. If you're a congressman, senator, you can buy lists of people to go and market to. He built his own database. Like he built it from ground up. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, he's, uh, he's just brilliant. And but he's got his own podcast. And I've told people, like, you know, what the people in Washington are missing. They don't control their own media. They're ignorant of marketing. They're horrible. And, and here Donald Trump goes and starts his own podcast on iTunes. And I'm going, <laughs> he doesn't have time to have a podcast, but he just has people come on for him, you know, like Bill O'Reilly and whoever um that does his podcast with or for him but the guy just gets it he totally gets it i wish people in america would get past the partisanship and the politics and go why don't you just look at what he's done and what he's doing and maybe maybe you can take a chapter out of his book and go create your own thing and be successful mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's the way i look at it i'm like what is he doing because i want to do what he's doing <laughs> if i could be, if i could be one percent as successful as this guy i'm all right you know yeah um but anyways well, so tell me, I know we've kind of went in different places here. I want to bring you on again because I want to talk about, we've talked about the macro, but I'd like to talk about the micro at some point and talk about, um, you know, the trials, you know, the, cause in the, 
everybody needs to hear that. I think everybody hears about success stories all day long, but they need to hear about the, the times, the hard times. And, um, but so I'll bring you on again. I'm going to do that. Nice. Uh, nice. But the other thing that. I want to, yeah. The other thing though, before we get off, I want to talk to you about is, um, so where, like, what do you see yourself doing now? Obviously you're in funnels. You, you're, you have a network marketing business. <clears throat> um, so are you going to do something with a podcast? I mean, what do you see yourself doing in the next, say in 2020, what yeah, do you see yourself doing? That's a great question. I, I do have a podcast. It's called the struggle sucks is the name of it. The mm. struggle sucks. And uh, it's born out of some of these experiences that I've had. I've had mountaintop experiences and, and just wonderful, for the most part, wonderful times in life. But, well, we've had some calamities and catastrophes. And I think about it, that's my business life has been that way. But, you know, a lot of people, there are struggles out there that everybody's going through. I mean, it's cancer. It's abandonment. It's uh, bankruptcy. It's uh, Alzheimer's. It's ha having to quit your job or getting fired. My wife, Kathy, uh, she got laid off about three months ago, just completely unexpected. Guy walks up. She didn't even know who it was. She said, Miss Darnell, we appreciate your service to this company for the last 10 and a half years. Uh, we're not going to be need needing your services anymore. Uh, please pack your uh, desk right now. Wow. And I, I mean, that was on a Friday afternoon. And she, she, I mean, you know, and women, especially, I mean, that would have killed me, but women are more sensitive, I think, to something like that. She was devastated, man, psychologically mm -hmm. for quite some time. So the struggle does suck. Now, how do we deal with that? Well, a lot of those struggles lead to financial problems. And that's why I'm a, uh, you know, I trumpet the financial things so so often. Get that residual cash flow coming in with net, uh, network marketing. Uh, get investments in the stock market. Get, uh, get your infinite bank going, man. What a smart thing that is. So smart. And, uh, but if you you know, if a parent gets sick and you have to go take care of them and you've got a job, well, you might be able to leave that for about two weeks. But after that, you're, you've got problems and yep. you're going to have to either come back and go to work or let you, you know, let your parents just rot or what, you know, whatever the circumstance is, but there are calamities that happen in life to all of us and we're, none of us are immune uh, to it. And so, uh, and they always result, almost always result in problematic financial issues. And it could be something simple, excuse me, it might be that your car breaks down. It might be that your washing machine goes out. It might be that your air conditioner goes out and heaven forbid that happens. Cause that's about a $4,500 deal right there. <coughs> excuse me. And so anyway, that that's just been a, a, a real passion of mine is to talk about uh, finances and getting those things working. And if I can help people in whichever of those spheres, and I, I've learned how to do options trading. I've done a ton of options trading, uh, both calls and puts and spreads and those kind of thing. And uh, I taught, basically taught myself how to do it and learned from several other mentors. But uh, those are, I think those are skills that you need to know. I think you need to know how to build a funnel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like you and I talk, you say, what would you do if you, you need an immediate cash flow right now. I'd build a funnel. I'd probably find an affiliate product that I really like that's selling like hotcakes. And I'd get that up and running as quick as I possibly could. And bam, you've got money coming in. And uh, so anyway, it's just, those, no, are, it's those, good. those are my passions and, and uh, the struggle sucks. So, well, that, that, that's a good, that's a good name though for it because I can relate to that not only in business, but when you're wrestling or you're in athletics, it's like, they talk about that. Like you have to be able to withstand. Well, they always talk about, you've got to be able to withstand the process. You got to appreciate the process. You got to, which that is the struggle obviously is what they're saying. And it's tough, man. And I think like, if you listen to some of these good podcasts, like Jocko Willink and um, you know, he's a Marine or Navy SEAL. He's a Navy SEAL. And these guys that have went through and disciplined themselves, it's like, when I listen to them, I'm like laying in bed listening to one of their podcasts. I'm like, God, I feel lazy compared to these guys. Like, hey, <laughs> right. Dang. I mean, what they went through, they fought for our country. And, uh, but then these, you know, like Donald Trump as an entrepreneur, Mark Q, and these guys are, I think it all really comes down to discipline and it is hard to have. There's no question about it. it, it can, it's hard to have discipline, especially when you got kids and especially, I mean, well, that's an excuse too. But when you have kids, you should have more discipline. Right. I mean, more yeah. than anything. And, um, and I think I've learned that through the entrepreneurial, uh, the entrepreneurial journey, but 
Yeah, it's been fun. It was always fun working with you because it made me look at things. You had an interviewing process, which I thought was brilliant. It's probably hard to do that in network marketing because you got so many people coming at one time, uh, you know, but I, I still think an interviewing process of some sort is brilliant to have. Uh, you had a good one. You had a three, I think it's a three step process that you had to go through, which I thought was great. Um, and it built some, it built some, uh, I don't know the word for it, but by the time they got to you, they were pretty much ready to, to start a business. Yeah. And it was good. I thought that was a great thing. I learned a lot of marketing, but mindset was just a big thing I learned in, in uh, your program. Um, and it's, and I think your mindset come from years and years of being in the, uh, network marketing space. So when you can take that wisdom and, and I guess put it into someone else, that's, uh, that's invaluable. Well, and they've got to be wanting to learn. I mean, it, you know, you can mentor people all the time, but it, unless they're raising their hand saying, man, tell me, just talk to me, <laughs> let's just talk. And uh, that's, that's the best mentoring that can come about. And, and you can find out, well, this person has a, a really a, a pretty horrible error in thinking or perception mm -hmm. on a certain aspect. Uh, man, a, a book that, uh, Josh, I don't know if I've talked to you about it, but there's a book out there called Habits, The Power mm -hmm. of Habits. Yeah. I the author right now, but uh, if you would read the introduction to that book, it's like mind boggling. It, the the excuses, the habits that we get into, uh, you know, and we need to break those patterns. If we can break one of those keynote, these key patterns, uh, then it, your whole life changes, everything else changes. And so it's just knowing things like that. And, and like when I'm talking with people and they, they're just struggling like crazy for everything, I say, I want you to do one thing different. And it's this, I want you to do that different. I want you to teach yourself how to not do that for the next 25, 30 days. Yeah. If you can get off that teeny little thing right there. You'll, you'll see a ripple. We talk about that ripple effect. You'll talk, you'll see that affect your entire life in such a positive way. So it's just a lot of things like that. I know I've seen in me, uh, I'll get off on a tangent sometimes and don't even know I'm on a tangent until I right. talk to somebody else and they say, you, you realize you're chasing rabbits right now. Right. And I go, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're exactly right. I think I well, it's hard. It's hard when you're when you're working from home. It's hard to identify that because it's just you, right? Mm -hmm. And it is hard to identify that sometimes. And I I've caught myself in some bad habits. 2019, we had a good year, but you're always looking at yourself when you're raising kids. <clears throat> that's a very illuminating thing because you're telling them one thing, and you're going, "Am I okay? Am I being that consistent? Like, am I?" am I doing what I'm preaching over here? You know? Yeah. And so that, that's a huge thing that hits me from, well, I say from time to time, like daily, you know, right. <laughs> it's right. a, it's a daily type thing that you're like, gosh, I got to change some things. But anyways, well, man, I really appreciate you, you coming on here. Like I, I like to have conversational podcasts. I think these, you know, you hear podcasts that are kind of scripted. I don't like doing that. I think people want to hear the raw truth and just things that are real from people. And I think there's a lot to learn well, there's a lot to learn from you. I've, I've learned a lot from you. And I think that's been one of my, probably one of my biggest things is I've always watched people, what they've, what they've done, how they've been successful, and then their, their pains, what they've had to go through. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, because I think, and if, and if you can do that, it's like, you know, what a, I don't know, what a, uh, what a, uh, it's just, to me, it's like, it's, it shortens your learning curve. You know, right. I remember Joe, a good friend of mine, he used to say, if I can shorten your learning curve by 10 years, you know, would it be oh. worth it? I'm like, gosh, I'm like, dude, like, yeah, now it's good. <laughs> I, I would have never went through college. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I'd rather learn. I would rather learn from a, a multimillionaire who's had their ups and downs and go to their college and learn from a professor teaching theory all day long, you know, oh, any day of the week. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll do this again, Tim. Uh, so what, give this name of your podcast one more time. It's The Struggle Sucks, T-H-E, Struggle Sucks, S-T-R-U-G-G-L-E-S-U-C-K-S. -S cool. So I had a woman revile me today for using the word sucks in the, <laughs> in the deal. I said, you know something? Uh, I can't think of a more accurate term to use than that. If I said the struggle is real, that would be so blah. And so, oh nothing. yeah, that's, that's would, so been overused. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's it been overused. and you wouldn't be talking to me. 
the fact, the very fact that this woman was reviling me, I hadn't talked to her in over a year. I couldn't get her attention. So I, I said something that got her attention. Yeah. <laughs> she, she actually proved my, my reasoning for doing that. <laughs> so if they want to find you on um, social media. Where's a good place to find you at? And uh, uh, like on. Yeah. The, uh, uh, let's see the best place to uh, hit me up on Facebook. Number one, Tim Darnell on Facebook, Allen, mm -hmm. Texas. Yep. And love to friend you there. And then uh, the struggle sucks.com okay. is, uh, is that's our funnel. And so that's a good place to go. And then uh, Tim Darnell.org. I've got a bunch of training on that from years back. I mean, just, I don't know how many hundreds on there. That's, that was my first, not really podcast, but recorded uh, recordings in that site. So yeah. Is your podcast up on iTunes and stuff yet? Or it is, is it just yeah. Gonna start it? yeah. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, so. All right, Tim. Well, man, I appreciate you coming on. And um, I know you're, it's probably, I don't know what the weather is like down in Texas. It's nice here. So I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll have this up here fairly quick, but awesome. I appreciate you coming on. Tell Jesse I said hello and uh, just love being with you, man. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it, Tim. Take care. See ya.